what is up guys, today I'll be profiling my Destruction Sword deck. I believe this is the first time I'm featuring this deck on the channel. This deck really has amazing artwork and also a really fun playstyle. But before I get started, please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and also consider subscribing to watch more videos. You can also help the channel out by sharing this video or just watching one more video. So starting off, we're going to be playing three copies of our Buster Blader, the Destruction Swordsman. I find this card to be quite crucial at three copies, at least for my particular build. I find that with Buster Welp being searching out all of your specific cards, you do want to actually start off with the Buster Blader in this particular type of style because of the fact that the other Buster Bladers can't actually be searched out because they are not Destruction Sword cards. So because of that, they do have their own limitations as to why I'm playing three copies of this particular one. Of course, this particular version also allows you to have additional effects as well, which is definitely more beneficial in this particular case. Next up, I'm playing two copies here of Buster Blader. Yes, one of them is Toon Buster Blader, but that's more so to be a bit fun with this particular build here. It doesn't really matter because either way, you're going to be playing two copies of the Buster Blade anyway. They have the same name in this particular case, and you really just need it for the extra fusion materials. Plus, being a level 7 for this particular deck also helps out for a future card that we're going to be talking about later on. Moving on, we have our key card here, Buster Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman. A really crucial card, pretty much the card that starts everything off. You essentially want to draw this card in your opening hand because as soon as you summon it out, you get to add a Destruction Swordsman card from your deck to your hand. It also has the ability to tribute itself to summon out our Buster Blader either from our hand or graveyard. Otherwise, while this card is in the graveyard, you can discard a Destruction Sword card to add it back to your hand. Otherwise, if this card is in your graveyard, you can discard a Destruction Sword card from your hand to special summon this back out. Next up, I'm playing two copies of Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. So thankful that this actually came off the ban list because this card is definitely a really great card that makes this deck work out incredibly well. So to play two copies here is wonderful. I don't think there's any need to play three copies just because it doesn't really do too much else. But to have at least two copies to at least sustain this deck uh, for multiple turns to lock out your opponent is definitely fantastic. Why was this card actually banned? Well, if it's equipped to a Buster Blader card, you could essentially just lock out your opponent from their entire extra deck, which is very powerful. Next up, I'm playing one copy of the Wizard Buster Destruction Sword. This is just a personal preference of mine. Some people choose not to play this particular card, but it's just something that I thought was a nice tech. Moving on, I'm playing two copies here of just the Confit. This is more so a card that I consider to be an extension of the deck itself allowing you to bring out more monsters onto your board to allow you to go for your Link Summons. Moving on, I have Tenyi Spirit Vishida. This card is quite an interesting card. I didn't realize how good this card actually was in the particular deck here, and it does have to be specifically Vishida. Don't worry, this card is actually very easy to get, simply by the Egyptian God Structure decks. I don't know if it comes in both of them, I think it only comes in one of them either this life or the obelisk one, so definitely check the card list, but if you bought either of those, you will have copies of the Vishida. It is a level 7 monster, which really synergizes with this particular deck, because there is a spell card we'll be getting to later on that requires level 7s, not to mention we have a bunch of level 1 tuners that allows us to go for our level 8 synchros. You guys might be surprised to see that I'm playing Leonidas, two copies of this, but it kind of makes sense, this deck is powered by level 1 monsters, as a result I'm definitely going to be playing 3 copies of the Where Art Thou, I think that's pretty self explanatory, but we are going to be taking damage, so for extra addition into this particular deck, I decided to include 2 copies of Leonidas, definitely is a great extension for this particular deck, and no one's really playing it in this particular deck anyway, so I think I'm the first to actually try out this particular idea. To wrap up the monsters, we're playing 3 Effect Failure. Not only can it be searched out via Where Art Thou, but it is still also a level 1 tuner, allowing you to potentially go for some synchro plays, which is an added bonus to this. Plus, 
its effect failure. It could actually negate effects. Not that we necessarily need it though, if you actually know what this deck can do. So onto spells, we're playing three copies of Where Art Thou. This is, like I said earlier, self-explanatory for the deck. We're playing a bunch of level ones. We want to be able to search them out really easily and this is the card for it. The other card that you guys might also be expecting in this deck is two copies of Sacred Sword of Seven Stars. We've been going through a lot of level 7 monsters as well. As a result, I wanted to have a bit of a draw engine in this deck and playing two copies of Sacred Swords definitely works out incredibly well. Thought I'd talk about all three of these together. We do want some of our spell cards in the actual graveyard, so two copies of Burial Goods is definitely a fantastic option. Of course, there's no need to play three copies, just because if we draw into two copies of them, we kind of break since it's a hard ones per turn. As for the regular Foolish Burial, this one's just to get our monsters to the graveyard because there are some cards that we actually need in the graveyard as early as possible to try and go for either our fusion summons or any other plays. As for a few more cards here, this is more so extensions. We definitely have to play a few cards to extend our actual plays itself. So cards like one for one, instant fusion, the Destruction Swordsman Fusion to also go for our Fusion Summons really easily as opposed to the version that would go for in the Graveyard. We also have here the Monster Reborn and the World Legacy Guard Dragon. Just great cards to bring more cards back out onto the field to extend our plays. And for a bit of small disruption, we are playing here the Harpy's Feather Duster as well as Caught by the Grave. Now as for the trap cards, I'm going to be playing one copy of Destruction Sword Flash, two copies of Prologue, and two copies of Memories. Now as you guys can see here, both Memories are unfortunately proxies, I do not actually own the copies of the cards themselves, trying to look for them because they are from a very odd set, but for the time being I just have to go with the proxies. Although they are both the most crucial trap cards for this particular deck, it's the one you definitely want to be playing in the actual deck. So moving on to our extra deck, we're going to be playing two copies here of our Buster Blader, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman, and two copies of Buster Dragon. I did wish I could play three copies though, to be honest, if you have to reach that particularly far into the game with the third copy of each, you're most likely going to be losing because the first two copies should be enough for you to actually win the game. I'm of course also going to be playing here one copy of Protect the Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman, a fantastic card for this particular deck that really does extend your plays, if not open up your plays. So these here are the Link Monsters that I consider to be more of a toolbox, they're not necessarily crucial for the deck but they definitely help out being part of this particular deck. And finally for a few interesting texts, well, Millennium Eyes is more so our instant fusion target so it's definitely fantastic and also going into the Absolute Dragon is a fantastic choice because after it leaves the field you could easily just special summon out your Vortex Dragon. So what exactly is the core strategy of this particular deck? Well Buster Blader the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman is your key card. It basically negates every dragon card that your opponent controls. That's the most important effect of this particular card. And that kind of starts off a very nice lockdown. Of course, you can play cards like DNA Surgery to change all of your opponent's monsters to dragon types, making this a very effective card. However, we do not need it. It is just a great card to speed up the deck or add more consistency, but we should be able to go for the other option that makes this card viable. So alongside our Buster Blader, we also want to bring out the Buster Dragon. Buster Dragon, while it's on the field, all monsters your opponent controls become dragon type, essentially building up your lockdown. To have these two cards on the field is definitely a fantastic option and it's also really easy to go into as well. It's what we always want to open up with, whether we are going first or second because negating your opponent's entire board is definitely just something that is well worth going for. If you have played your cards correctly on your opening turn, you're pretty much going to end up with a board like this, where you have Protect the Whelp, Buster Blader, Buster Dragon, and of course our original Buster Blader here, equipped with the Dragon 
uh, Buster as well, which will lock out your opponent from their extra deck. Definitely a very deadly combo that represents the core strategy behind this particular deck. So what are the actual strengths of this particular deck? Well, as I already talked about the core strategy, this deck essentially will lock out your op opponent's entire board out by negating all of their monsters given that they will be dragon types. And additionally to that, all their dragon type monsters will also be switched to defense position through this particular card's effect as well. That's a very powerful effect because it essentially protects your own monsters from even being destroyed by battle because they can't even initiate an attack to begin with. On top of that, to be able to go for your Dragon Buster as an equipped option to also lock out your opponent's extra deck, it's just devastating because some decks really do depend on their extra deck. Now, this particular deck does actually have quite a few weaknesses and vulnerabilities. The first biggest weakness is of course Kaijus. Of course, this is given for a lot of decks out there. However, the thing is this, with other decks, they do have means of recovery really easily in the following turn. For the Buster Blader deck, there is a second weakness, and that is we essentially will burn out our resources and we are going to be struggling to actually recover if the opponent manages to empty out our board. It's kind of one of those decks that is all or nothing. The third weakness with this particular deck is that it will be negated easily by hand traps, particularly Ash. Even Vela can negate the Buster well. However, all of these cards can be negated with hand traps, which is quite devastating because if you can't get your searches, you can't extend, you can't bring out cards onto the board, and your core strategy will just crumble apart. The other weakness with this particular deck is that if you don't draw into enough of your Destruction Swordsman cards, you won't be able to discard with your Buster Whelp's effect to actually special summon it back out. Furthermore, you can't even go into your main core strategy, being your Destroyer Swordsman and your Buster Dragon. Because bringing out one of them isn't really too amazing, whereas if you bring out both of them, it's obviously the ideal move here. I mean, you bring out one of them, you're not really going to be affecting the board too much. The final weakness I want to emphasize with this particular deck is it bricks a lot. This particular deck, as consistent as I could actually make it, it does have a few drawbacks in the sense that there are several cards that won't necessarily synergize with one another, so if you draw into the wrong cards, you won't be able to play, which could leave you in a really devastating position. But that's going to be explored a lot more in depth in the actual test and videos. So with my final thoughts, this deck, although it has an amazing theme and great aesthetics, it unfortunately does fall apart in terms of consistency and in terms of actual vulnerabilities. But you know what, this deck is still incredibly fun so I do implore that you guys actually do try it out. However, I would like to thank you all for joining me today, I hope you all have a wonderful day, I'll see you all next time.